politics <laughs> aside, uh, the, the words, the message itself from what we just heard, do you agree? Well, I would say what really is, as Steve also was mentioning, the issue going forward is that we just don't know what the behavioral change is going to be in the overall banking sector, and particularly in the regional banks, in terms of tightening lending standards. If we are going into a period where the banks need to reorganize their balance sheets and they need to now deal with issues, everything from higher funding costs to more regulation to also assets having declined in terms of treasuries being down because rates are going up, the risks, of course, are looking ahead that we may have some more headwinds in terms of lending. And remember that the regional banks account for 30% of all assets in the banking sector and 40% of all lending. And as you cover so well, of course, this is on certain products, commercial real estate and elsewhere, then raising the risk that lending are across a wide range of areas for consumers, corporates, real estate, commercial real estate, residential real estate might therefore face quite some headwinds going forward. So the downside risks are definitely intensifying as we look ahead. Yeah, it, it's sort of this argument of, a, of if the Fed is done tightening, let alone cutting, which I know is something that's been priced into the market for later this year, then either one of those scenarios means maybe things aren't going so well with the economy. So what are you watching in terms of high frequency data or other key points or, or factors to, to inform you about this dynamic actually materializing? Yeah, first, of course, the data we just spoke about, namely what's happening to the deposits. And of course, the good news and the data that just came out a few minutes ago is that deposits, it looks like the outflows are stabilizing. As Steve was mentioning, there might be something now we're looking at what's going on with the larger banks in terms of outflows. But broadly speaking, it looks at least like it's a little bit better than what we had last week. But now the, what we should be spending time on now, the attention should be turning to the economic indicators. What's happening with small bank lending to consumers? What's happening with small bank lending to corporates? What's happening with small bank lending to even also commercial real estate? And more broadly, of course, what's happening to jobless claims? Uh, we have daily data, meaning uh, there's public daily data about how many people go to restaurants, how many fly on airplanes. All that is still OK. But if you begin to look at some of the weekly data for credit cards, that has actually begun to slow down a bit. So the question is, what will the high frequency, the weekly data do over the coming weeks ahead? And it does take a little bit of time before credit crunch kicks in. But it is very important because all this comes on the back of the lack effects of Fed hikes, as you also just were mentioning, Morgan, that we already have the Fed have hiked, has hiked rates and we have some Fed hikes in the pipeline that still will be kicking in. And on top of that, adding both higher funding costs for our OAS has been widening out, meaning the cost of borrowing in markets, secured relative to unsecured has been widening out. And on top of that, if you get tighter lending standards, it does raise the risk that we could have a harder landing relative to a few weeks ago. So therefore, yes, it's true that things look a little bit better, but I'm meaning on the on the screens in terms of the data and where markets are trading. But the key issue going forward is what is going to be the behavioral change, because this is not just like LTCM or Orange County or even the UK LDI issue a few months ago, because all those things were not in the banking sector. Banking sector is critical because mm -hmm. it provides credit to the economy. So how do you balance all of this? against the inflation piece of the puzzle. We did get that PCE number this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you Mr. Supercore, since you are the man that came up with that term, and it is now the term that, that Wall Street and arguably the Fed itself uh, is now using, officially or unofficially, to, to gauge the stickiness of inflation. You've done a lot of work on the labor market as well, and looking at the fact that there's some structural changes to it. So how do these two things balance against each other, and how do we avoid a situation like stagflation? Yeah, that is really a challenge. I mean, the Fed keeps on saying they're data dependent. And obviously, if you look at the rear view mirror, the data is actually OK because the economy has just not quite slowed down a lot yet. So that's why it becomes very difficult when you look backwards to try to quantify this situation we have in front of us where we now need to assess what will happen in the banking sector. So I think to your question that absolutely inflation is still way too elevated. That's what all the FMC members keep on saying. Basically, inflation in round numbers, including the PCE numbers that came out today, is around 5%. And the Fed's target is that inflation should be 2 So it is difficult to put apples and oranges up on the scale. What do you put most weight on? Do you think that inflation at 5% is a big issue? Or do you think that the financial instability risks that we have in front of us are still enough so that you should not be hiking rates more? The good news for the Fed is that they still have now more than a month for the next meeting. But it really is very, very critical to monitor the incoming data, in particular for the economy, on spending for the consumer, on capex spending, and on hiring. To what degree are we beginning to see some signs of a slowdown? Because again, mm -hmm. it was already slowing down the economy because of the Fed 
having high grades now for the last 12 months. All right. Torsten Slock, appreciate you joining us on a day like today with so much information and data to digest. Thanks for having me, Morgan.